Cloud9 was... I mean, I don't know why. I, I, I felt like on my co-stream, I was... Well, okay, so we all... Some of them jokingly predicted TSM to win, but I think I was, like, one of the only people that actually <laughs> legitimately thought they would win. I didn't, uh... Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think they would end up losing the the series. I I was very surprised in the manner in which they won, but I think uh, I, I I thought that they should have won the series. Yeah. Why, why did you think they were gonna win? Just Bjergsen? No, I. Well, okay. So Cloud Nine, like the last few weeks of LCS and even their most recent playoff matches, they they just look lost. I don't know how to. I, I, I actually can't think, from all of the regions that I've watched, I, I can't think of a bigger descent than Cloud9. From, yep. like, the top of the standings to just, like, plummeting. Yeah. And the way like that they ever. just look... Yes, I mean, the cohesion, everything is just not there, man. Everything mm -hmm. is just not there. They look like they could have been, like, outfought by, like, solo queue players almost <laughs> in some in some spots. The way that, like... I I don't even know. I, I really don't even know. Um, yeah. Yeah, trying weird. to think of like nice things to say, and I can't. So <laughs> about Cloud Nine, I don't think you, don't think you yeah. have to be nice necessarily because <clears throat> like this is probably one of the most, if not the most, disappointing finish to a team's split ever. I would say uh, there was not only expectation because this team is great, but when you look at the whole year, they were so dominant. They were toying with teams. Reaper was toying yes. with teams in draft and. Uh, Vulcan and Zven would just shit on them with no matter who they had, right? And it wasn't until yep. they lost with the Wukong bot lane um, against Juanito Arturo Garcia, better known as Contracts and 100 Thieves, when all of a sudden everything fell apart uh, from, from, from my perspective, right, Tom? Well, I, I'm not sure if, if, like, they fell apart then or, like, it was just, like, a bad game because... At that point, I still was like, okay, it's fine. Like, they lost one game to 100 Thieves. It's not the end of the world. But for some reason, they, that game just, like, crushed them. They're, they just forgot how to win in general. They're like, uh, like, what, what do we even do? Do we just fight into Shenult every single time that it has a timer? Like, how? what's our, like, plan to victory? It seems like this team is, is so panicked when it goes... When, when they go into a game, it seems like every move they make is so desperate. It feels like when they start the series, they're already down, like, 0-2 right. with that final game. Like, that's the level of desperation I'm seeing out of all the the plays so i don't know for me it's it's really really like scary like to just see them you know fall so far because you know it, it felt like as soon as there was a little bit of pushback from enemy teams they just mm -hmm. completely collapsed which i've never really seen before um you know normally like teams are able to withstand that and you know if anything it makes them a little bit better they're like okay you know it's not the end of the world we like are not as good as we used to be but we just got to figure out our shit and we know we're better they're like oh shit like other teams might be better than us fuck it we're losing to everyone now we're losing to fly quest tsm like it doesn't even fucking matter anymore well well how much of it because people in chat are bringing it up and there, there's always you know a lot of people point to that how much of it was that they lost grip of the meta and and less of like a mental of the team because the way that you just said it made it sound like it's the mental of the team that kind of just slipped away I don't really care about the meta. I mean, they're winning with meta, they're meta champs. They're winning with off meta champs. They could play everything before. They could win with scaling comps, and they would even win yeah, early game yeah. with scaling comps. Like it wasn't like in, in spring they just had, like people try to make it out as like they had one play style, and that's like why they won. Like sure, you could like identify some things like they played Rome midlaners, but it's not like they stopped playing Rome midlaners. Like in this final series, they were playing the same midlaners that they were playing in spring. They were playing a bunch of Zoe, which is like one of the strongest picks right now. I don't think that they just suddenly. Um, couldn't play the champions. Um, obviously, like other things became stronger. To gauge like fights, just completely evaporated from my perspective. If you watch their their brain check where they do the voice comms, every single fight that they go into, they think they're gonna win. When they when like these are fights, they should just be calling like, hey, this is like a loss. Like we don't want to take a five v five bot lane when we have GP versus Shen. Like yeah. it's okay if like you know we force out a Shen ult and then we disengage and then GP will like have an ulti for like the next fight. And you can play off that. But it felt like every single time that they fought, it had to be an all-in. And every single time they thought they were going to win a fight, or they thought they were going to win every fight, where, like, a lot of these fights are just, like, you know, completely unwinnable. Or they're just not fighting on their timings. Also, like, throughout the game, I mean, they're just getting picked so much. Like, even if you go back to the FlyQuest series, right? Like, Game 3 versus FlyQuest, that was the one where they had Gragas, um, GP, Ezreal, Yumi. Uh, they were playing with Zoe mid. They have, like, a 7k gold lead and Baron on a GP, Yumi, Ezreal team going into like the mid game and somehow they just get picked four times in a row. They get caught four times in a row 
and then they just end up like losing soul and then slowly losing the game from that point. It just doesn't look like Cloud9 anymore. Like they were so much better at being able to like identify what the other team's strengths were, um, like what to play around, like how to toy the other teams around the map. Like that was just something that they were they were practiced on. And now that's like completely been lost. Like it feels like they just have no idea how to make these decisions anymore. I like the the point you're mentioning, right, about like the gangplank Ezreal Yumi and the team compositions. There there was many times where they had a uh, a better draft, they had better game states, and they had massive leads, and then they still found ways to blunder them with just awful cohesion. And I'm trying to I'm trying to think what could end up being like the the reason for something like this, but I really don't even I I, I don't know what it is. Like normally at the very start of splits in either spring or summer, you'll see teams that have like the most cohesion with one another stand out against other teams just because they're they're better at working together but then as the split progresses and other teams get more adjusted to working with one another then those teams begin to struggle the teams that just relied on uh, teamwork and whatnot but i don't know how cloud nine falls apart i wonder if their practice or the way that they view or approach the game takes a hit because they were winning so much and they were so dominant and then maybe they just grow really lax and stuff starts to get really bad. I, I have no idea. And then I, 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 you know, the thing that you mentioned about the, the meta, I don't think that, I mean, if you look at all of their match history, there, there's not really an issue with meta at all. Like, I, I mean, I guess the, the one thing I would personally complain about, I guess, is like jungle, right? Because I have a very mm -hmm. different view on like jungle champions with like even Karthus and uh, Gragas and whatnot being way higher than like Lee Sin and fucking set and volibear and nocturne shit. oh my god they played a nocturne game into lilia how insane ah, is that okay that's well. a fucking grief <laughs> but yeah you all right <laughs> no, no, no i mean that that was pretty much it i mean i i don't know um i think i think their drafts like i think their drafts for the most part were okay they had some really fucking weird ones though that i i don't understand like what the fuck is going on um, I also think they won with some really bad drafts at some points, um, which has nothing to do with it. And I don't, yeah, I, I don't really know like what to think if you're if you're Cloud Nine and you're wondering like, well, what what are, what are we really doing wrong? And I think that like having access to the mic checks would be really good um, because we as like outsiders don't totally know what the hell is being said because like you're saying, there's no way that they're seeing or talking about the same things when they're doing some of these team fights. They're on like, I made a joke on Twitter or something that like. Uh, a team was on different wow layers but that that's like actually how they look sometimes yeah well, that, well yeah and, and i'm asking those questions because i want to i want to make sure that we cover our bases towards <clears throat> this 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 fall from cloud nine right because it just it feels weird no one expected it no one would have expected it after at the beginning of summer even by the end of playoffs everyone's like all right there they go they rifled off a couple wins and they looked better even though it was shitty uh, opponents they got it done they stopped the skid they were able to bounce back in the loser's bracket against EG, 3-0. But man, like, it, it it did look like they were picking fights that they had no business to fight and no business to win, uh, as, as Dom said. It's really fucking strange. And then also, like, when you just look at, at, at the team, um, it, it feels like they don't know what they're good at anymore. So just everything is just like RNG. It's just like, I mean, like... Fuck, like, are we a late game team? All right, let's try late game. Oh, that, that failed. Like, let's try early game. And then they just lose early game as well. I mean, th there was the point of practice that LS mentioned that I think could be um, an issue. I mean, from all accounts, this team was, like, the most dominant scrim practice. Like, the, the most dominant scrim yes. team period in the LCS. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they had apparently, going like, through playoffs, they were, like, 35-5 and five in scrims. Like, they're winning every single scrim game. So... I mean, I, I just don't even know what to say about that. Like, I wonder if at a point, um, and this is something that I mean, I, I asked them uh, personally today, was at a point, do you like try to not take free kills or take solo kills as much so you get to like a, a mid game or a late game so you can actually practice some of these later game states? Because it feels like, you know, like in for, for them, if they're rolling ev over every single team in 20 minutes, they're 5 0ing every single team in um 20 minutes including teams that they they lost to like think about FlyQuest FlyQuest literally gets 5-0'd by C9 every single time in scrims and then 3 ones them on stage how insane is that like that, I, you, that I mean, go for oh, it no, no I I was just gonna say I I think the point that you're mentioning about like intentionally not taking kills and stuff in order to force mid game so that they can actually get better practice I would be extremely surprised to hear any western team actually do that 
Whereas I know that in uh, historically in Asia, um, China, Korea, I, I don't know about Japan, through different esports, that's always been a thing. Intentionally handicap, uh, handicapping yourselves against weaker players when you know that you're going to win in order to get better practice if you just can't get better practice like on the day. Um, that would be an insane thing to actually do. I just don't give any credit for especially a North American team to think like that. You know, TL in season five, we actually did that. That was something that there we actually go. did. When we scrimmed against our academy team, we like talked about it. It's like, hey, like if you see like a solo kill, like let's not win the game through solo kills. Let's try to get to like a mid and late game um, versus team. So like you can take you can take a chunk. You can like look for like turret chip, stuff like that. But like our coaches would literally stand behind us and be like, hey, like don't take that kill. Like just like, <laughs> let them reset here. Let them reset so that we actually can like practice a mid or late game. <laughs> all here. T right. TL season five should have been world champs. Should have been world champs. Yeah, something like that. Uh, I mean, it did actually help us because we were like a really shit team and we did get better. Like we were like a seventh place team that ended up like, like eventually like winning like at least the regular season and then like placing third twice. So from where we were, it did help us, I, I would say. So um, I actually like always appreciated that idea. Um, I don't think it's bad to like, like, I don't think that just because you're going to take every single kill on stage, like, you know what to do when a kill is presented to you, right? right like, right, right. it's not that hard to execute at that point. I think there is an idea of, like... Sandbagging I, I think, practice. Yeah. Well, yeah, not even sandbagging. Just, like, getting yourself to, like, a state where it's like, hey, we're going to, like, practice Baron setups. And the way to, like... And we're not going to practice Baron setups when three people are dead. Like, that's not a Baron setup anymore. That's just fucking hitting the Baron. We're going to practice, like, 5v5, like, the Baron dance. You know? So, I think it actually works out do you do you think there's a dilemma that all five of the players actually so as weird as this sounds all five of the players have different ideas of like what they want to do and so as everything developed and evolved they just started going in different directions i mean i, I don't know all the players on like i obviously I, I don't know pretty much any of the players right but like um i wonder if their outlook on the game is just very different and when they were winning like, if, if you look at the way that Niski was uh, always just playing mid, right? It makes yep. it very easy for bot and top to just play regardless of what you're doing. Just makes it super fucking easy. It's like, honestly, you're just you're, you're playing with training wheels on, pretty much, if you're bot and top lane. But the second that shit's going to start getting rough, and everyone's going to have to start thinking more and, and acting more cohesively, do you think things just fall apart because they have different perspectives on the game? I mean, it's really hard to say. You know, I mean, I think definitely they do have different perspectives on the game. I mean, you can hear that just clearly in their voice comms, right? Like, anytime that anyone is on the fucking screen, Blabber wants to fight. That's literally <laughs> his perspective on the game, right? And, and I'm not even exaggerating when I say that. Like, he is literally perma-fighting. And then Vulcan is, like, just a more controlled player in general. But that always was, like, a balance that made sense within the team. You know, it was like the... Like, I don't think that all five players need to have the exact same mindset at every stage for a team to work. Sounds like, impossible. Yeah, it's it's not going to be a thing, right? Like you have people balance themselves out, um, and it just it just seems like at some point they stopped like trusting each other. Whereas before, you know, Vulcan could kind of put Blabber on the leash. He could be like, "All right, here, boy," like, and then just like get him <laughs> get him to come back over and like be like, "All right, like you're going too deep, like reel it back in." But now it's just like they're just rabid fucking animals. Blabber goes, and then they all just fucking go and just die. Like they power in together. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I respect the um, I, I respect the the fact that they are like different. I don't think that's necessarily a problem that they have different views on the game. But for some reason, like there's just no synergy, there's no cohesion, and they don't trust each other. Which is the biggest thing. <laughs>